Hello everyone. So I did a very similar video just a few days back, but I deleted it because I decided that uh, there just wasn't enough information in it. For a topic that warrants um, a very in-depth discussion and discourse, I don't really think I gave it justice. So here I am, refilming it. This time I'm going to break this all down into seven different sections of discussion. Uh, those seven sections are don't drink unfiltered tap water, how to filter water effectively, don't bathe in unfiltered bath water, how to drink water properly, what purified water will do for your being, putting crystals in drinking water, and other general uses for filtered water. This is the beginning to my Guide to Life Clarity series. Um, and before I begin, I would like to say that you should really go out and research all of this yourself. However much I'm going to try and back up these points, I can't go into minute detail on every single last little point. So I highly, highly encourage you all to go out and research this yourself. Okay, so let's begin. Now, there's an absolute abundance of toxins and poisons in our water supply. This isn't some sort of far out conspiracy theory. This is openly admitted by our government. In fact, if you go to your local town hall or go onto your city council's official website, you'll be able to find official documentation stating specifically what poisons and toxins and contaminants and metals are put into the water supply. This information is out there, officially. Um, so, I highly recommend, like I said a minute ago, you go and research exactly what is in your water supply. But what I want to do now is tell you what's in mine. Uh, I will be linking you to the official documentation in the description bar below. But for the sake of time, I'm also going to list off um, some of these toxins and poisons and contaminants and metals. Um, okay, so in Arcada's water supply, there is chlorine. There is fluoride. There is barium. Uh, barium is used in fireworks, by the way. There is sulfate. There is copper. There is lead. There is aluminium. And there is chloride. Some of these things are put directly into the water supply by our government. Uh, fluoride and chlorine, for example. And the government don't deny this. Uh, however, some of these things are merely byproducts of pipe erosion say for example um, copper and lead. Out of that list I'm going to hone specifically in on chlorine and fluoride. Now the reasoning behind why the government put chlorine in the water supply is to kill off the germs that lurk within it. Uh, and This seems all well and good but of course we all know that chlorine is a dangerous chemical to be ingesting into the human body so um, you know, to me, it seems like they're substituting one evil for another. You know, oh, chlorine kills off the germs, but chlorine, in a sense, is a germ in its own right. Uh, technically speaking, it's not a germ, but it is definitely uh, a toxin, you know. Uh, it should not be going into the human body. And um, they're also beginning to introduce new drugs that actually interact with the chlorine in a way that creates cancer-producing chemicals. And again, this is all stuff you can find out, stuff they're not denying. It's just stuff that they, they don't really air it to the world. They kind of just, you know, it, the information is out there if you want to find it. But they just kind of, you know, they keep quiet about it. They don't really get on top of the rooftops and start shouting about it. And no wonder why. So the other thing that I wonder is, you know, if they're knowingly putting a dangerous chemical or dangerous chemicals into the water supply uh, for our benefit, then why don't they say, uh, or why don't they make it mandatory to put filters on the end of every tap? This makes no sense to me. Of all the stupid, pointless laws that our powers that be, our government, uh, implement, um, you know, all, 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 these, all these laws that don't benefit us, they implement. But, but the one law that really could benefit the populace, a mandatory rule that all taps have filters on the end of them, 
No. <laughs> they don't even go there. They don't even make it public knowledge that, you know, you should really be doing this. They say, yeah, yeah, we put drugs in the water supply. But then they don't even encourage anyone to filter their water. Not, not on a grand scale, at least. I mean, it might have been mentioned in passing a few times, but it's hardly a well-known fact that you should be doing this. And so the reasoning behind putting fluoride in the water supply is to keep our teeth healthy clean, to keep us cavity free. Um, yeah, again, this seems all well and good at first glance, but how come that on all fluoride toothpaste packaging, it implicitly warns you to not consume this stuff? It implicitly warns you how dangerous it is to consume this stuff. Yet somehow the government think it's okay to go and put it in the water supply for us to consume. The other ironic thing here is that there's actually been a study done by the Centre for Disease Control and Prevention that actually shows that fluoride in the water supply can potentially cause tooth decay. Okay? This is a, this is a genuine study that's been um, uh, conducted from 1999 through to 2004. So it's five years worth of research. Um, and it found that 41% of children um, from ages 12 through 15 actually had the tooth spotting condition known as fluorosis, which is brought on by an overabundance of fluoride. Okay, so for just a moment, let's pretend that fluoride does help your teeth. Like I said, I'm not personally sure it does, because I've been using fluoride-free toothpaste for years now, and my teeth are very white, very clean, completely cavity-free. But anyway, let's just pretend for a moment that fluoride is good for your teeth. Okay, so I can kind of understand why they'd put it in toothpaste. I can kind of understand why they'd put it in something that you're rubbing over your teeth directly. But I know for a fact that when I drink water, I swallow it. It goes down the back of my throat. It goes inside of me. It doesn't touch my teeth. When was the last time you had a mouthful of water and you were swishing it round your mouth, cleansing your teeth, uh, and cleaning your teeth with the water. Okay, well, you may do that sometimes, or some people, hell, might do it every time at the end of cleaning their teeth. They might clean their teeth and then get some water, swish it around. Yeah, okay. But that isn't your drinking water, that is just you swishing out the foam of the toothpaste. Think about the last time you drank water from a cup or a jug or whatever, and it touched your teeth. You don't drink water like that, do you? Mm, over your teeth. You drink water like that. It goes down the back of your throat. It goes inside of you. It doesn't touch your teeth. Again, it may touch your teeth on occasion, very, very rarely. But on the whole, it doesn't. So why are they putting it in the water supply? It, it makes no sense. Some people might say, well, if the powers that be have control over the water supply, then surely they have control over the toothpaste companies, and surely they would take off these warnings from toothpaste packaging, because surely that's kind of showing up their nefarious plan. But the important thing to realise is the powers that be don't necessarily control everything. And that's why their totalitarian empire is now breaking down. They don't control everything. That's the point. They don't control the whole of the internet. They don't control every company in the world. There's a very, uh, a very small elite of people that are running the game here. And this small elite of people can't have their finger in every single pie at once. Yeah, they've got um, the general monopoly over control. They probably have control over 80, 85, maybe even 90% of things, but not everything. So they don't necessarily have control over Colgate or other toothpaste companies. 
so you might be thinking, well, if the government don't control these toothpaste companies, then why do the toothpaste companies still put fluoride in their toothpaste? They must think they're doing a service for the world, right? Well, yeah, exactly. You see, the powers that be have done such a bang-up PR job with ramming this fluoride is good for your teeth thing down people's throats that it has infiltrated the toothpaste companies just as much as the people's minds. Um, so the toothpaste companies don't necessarily have a part to play in this scheme, in this conspiracy. They've been conned just as much as us. Or of course there's the other possibility that fluoride is genuinely good for your teeth in small doses and when applied in the right fashion. However, my point here is that this stuff should not be consumed. This stuff should not be taken into the human body and no one can refute that. Another important point to make is that most European countries don't even put fluoride in their water supply. They know how dangerous fluoride is for human consumption, so they simply do not taint their water with it. So, if fluoride was so, so genuinely good for your teeth, undeniably so, then why aren't all countries joining in on this? Why aren't all countries putting fluoride in their water supply? Why are some countries refusing to do such a thing? If it was so, so genuinely good for you, then surely everyone would be doing it. But that's not the case. Okay, I'm going to round this up for now. In the next video, I'm going to be talking about why they're putting these drugs in the water supply. And what these drugs really do to us. Okay, so for now, I'm going to go. I love you all. I really do. Because this is why I'm making this video. So, bye for now. Namaste.